Jeremy needs no introduction to this audience. I just realized I didn't uh, give my uh, title slide because I wanted to save time. But I'm going to uh, argue for the need of an immunogenomic classification of cancer uh, during this talk. So molecular classification of cancer, uh, which started only two decades ago, have really transformed cancer care. So it helped, for example, understand that heterogeneity in outcome is partly explained by uh, genomic variation within the primary tumor. It helped also stratify cancer lesions within identical histological lesions, and it helped maximize, in fact, patients' response to treatment and also identify novel actionable targets. Now, we know now that uh, a tumor, in fact, is not a homogeneous mass of oncogene-driven tumor cells, and rather contain a large immune cell compartment that often, in fact, exceed 50% of uh, the, the, the cells that are present in these tumor lesions. And we know also that patients now are responding to uh, a single immunotherapy agents that are just activating, in fact, effector cells within the, 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 the tumor lesions, uh, suggesting that, in fact, immunotherapy is now really going to play a big role in cancer care. However, anti-tumor response to single agent immunotherapy remain limited to a subset of patients. This is very similar to what we've learned from Jim Holland, right, a, a, a Sinai giant who showed us that, in fact, tumor lesions also respond uh, uh, poorly to single uh, chemotherapy agents. So following the molecular classification paradigm, it is absolutely critical that we now start also classifying really this immune compartment that's present in the tumor lesions to in fact maximize tumor response to treatment, identify novel uh, targets of disease, but also guide novel combination therapy, which we believe is the only path to cancer cure. All right. So attempt now to identify, there has been a lot of attempt, or some attempt to identify in, in biomarker of tumor response, uh, and, uh, and with the exception of the expression of this microsatellite instability, which makes the tumor much more immunogenic and responsive to checkpoint blockade, most of them have limited clinical utility. We know that tumor lesions that uh, uh, lack uh, pdl one expression can still respond to anti-PD-1 blockade, for example. We know also that lesions that are heavily infiltrated with T cells uh, can also fail uh, uh, immunotherapy treatment. Uh, we have shown here at Sinai that, in fact, another branch of the, the, the immune system, which is called the, this innate branch that, in fact, Amir introduced, uh, this innate branch is probably also contributing largely to tumor response to immunotherapy, both probably the myeloid branch and this NK cell that Amir introduced. So, uh, <clears throat> So instead of spending the two next decades really looking at hundreds of biomarkers in isolation, what we propose is to look at every single cell of the tumor lesions, in fact, using in fact, the single cell platform that we have developed at Sinai. So this is an example of tumor mapping that is ongoing on HES5 by the Cancer Immunology Group. This is a lung tumor lesion that has been obtained uh, uh, from Raja Flores, the chief of thoracic surgery, through surgical pathology. Don't worry, Carlos. So we uh, then take these lesions, and using immunohistochemistry and deep learning algorithm, we can now really identify the different compartments in the tumor lesions. This tumor is now analyzed using this MIBI instrument that we recently purchased. This allows us to look at 40 molecules, both protein, DNA, RNA, both on the tumor, on the immune cell, and on the stroma. We can also assess the spatial distribution of these cells on the tumor lesions. The same tumor is now analyzed by mass cytometry, where we, here we can look at 80 molecules on millions of cells at the single cell level. And the same lesions can be also analyzed using single cell RNA sequencing, which allows us now to analyze the molecular fingerprint of each cell that is present in the tumor lesions. So I will argue that we should 
should do this for all our tumor and this uh, and, and really obtain this uh, holistic view of the tumor lesions. We could start by an anatomical mapping using uh, 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 imaging technology and using, for example, MRI uh, uh, imaging technique and also deep learning strategy. We can now obtain a lot of information on the tissue texture and understand whether this lesion is inflamed or necrotic, and this is very useful when we follow patients upon treatment. We will map the tumor at the tissue level using this MIBI technology that I just described. We can map it at the cellular level using mass cytometry. We can map it at the molecular level, and here we can look at somatic mutation on the tumor. We can look at the transcript of the tumor and immune cells and stromal cells. And you can do it now also during therapy. And the setting, the therapeutic setting that we are very excited about is the neoadjuvant setting, where in fact tumor lesions will receive therapy prior to treatment. And here you can have access to tissue prior and after treatment upon defined exposure to treatment, but it also gives you ample access to tissue uh, uh, after therapy, because you are going to analyze the surgical lesions. And of course, central uh, to uh, uh, this effort is building a data center that will help mine, in fact, all these data sets and also integrate them, stratify according to histolog histological response. Uh, so here I'm going to acknowledge all members of this uh, uh, Tumor Atlas team that has spent hours, in fact, brainstorming the best mapping strategy. It is, I think, essential uh, to, to realize that this can be done only through a multidisciplinary effort that will really fully engage to embrace the complexity, potentially without simplifying too much, embrace the complexity of this uh, tumor microenvironment, which uh, will help now guide uh, uh, novel and, and future therapy and hopefully get us closer to treatment. So I'd like to thank now uh, Ramon uh, and Adam for organizing this retreat, but I also would like to, uh, to really acknowledge Stephen Burakov, who I think transformed uh, the uh, cancer program at Sinai and for also his very strong support and dedication to the cancer immunology program. Thank you. Thank you.